I like taking things apart. Check out this 8-track player. It's by Sound Design. Which used to be like a sucky company. Like if you had a sound design stereo, that wasn't cool. But maybe this is a better unit. This is the model 484-2. It has six transistors, one diode, and two rectum fires. It's made in Japan. So we can go inside and see if it actually has all that junk. Now the first step to taking apart an electronic thing like this is to take it apart. Usually the feet, like this, do not hold the rest of it together. So I'm guessing it's these four screws. Now you might wonder, what is this tool right here? This is my Craftsman 47483 multi-screwdriver, which came with all these bits. And this is the best tool ever. I mean, maybe not the best tool ever, but... This is a great tool, and unfortunately now, when you buy it, it's made in China, and it's awful. I bought this probably 15 years ago. I think I, I had like a free coupon to the Craftsman store or something. I don't even remember why I bought it, but this thing's, I use it a lot. Phillips screwdriver. And... Take out one screw, take out two screws, normally electronics like this will have a lid. Let's turn it around and take out some more screws. This isn't really a lid, this is more of a housing, I think. I'm just kidding, I know I took it apart already. I took it apart before. Before what? See? You can see the chassis releasing from the body. And now it slides out. And you can see here, the cord has to kind of get tucked in. Oh, happened off camera. So how do you know it even happened? So let's check out the bottom of this thing first. Looks like it has an electric motor. I'm guessing that's a motor. And some circuitry and a big capacitor. Now, on the other side, I don't really know what all this stuff is. This is a transformer, more than meets the eye. There is a capacitor. There's your output jacks, plugs. Here's some more capacitors on a little circuit board. This right here is the top of this motor and it has a belt that drives this big thing. Check that out. I'm driving the motor. That's some wild stuff. Number 451022 doesn't make any sense. And under here, there's, I don't know, a bunch of stuff. I guess if I was really going to fully disassemble this thing, I probably would, but I think you can kind of get the idea of what's going on here. You know, you have some audio circuitry, you have a motor. I don't know exactly what that stuff does. It spins around. This looks like it's got something to do with the four tracks because it says 4321N. I don't know what the N's for. So here's your door. And I guess you pop the tape in there. And this thing, which says 
two, three, four, five, six, O, oh, that gets driven by the motor. So, wow, look at all the dirt that came out of that thing. Maybe you can't really see that. So let's see. I will go and I'll plug this thing in off camera. But I'll uncoil the wire on camera. Maybe I'll make a video about how to coil up wires. Some lady asked me how to do this once. Plug this in. And now it's plugged in. And the thing about these, first of all, I probably don't want to touch over there because that's where the electricity is. And if I touch there, then uh, that could be a problem. The thing about these 8-track players is it doesn't have a power button anywhere. It just has a program button and one, two, three, four little LEDs. And the way the 8-track player works, I have no idea, but you put in the tape and then you can go from program to program. So I got this tape. This is the Rebel Songs of Ireland. Now, I do not have this thing connected to any kind of audio device like a stereo. And if I did and I played this music, YouTube would be like, yo, you can't play other people's music. So I won't do that. But this is the Rebel Songs of Ireland. And I'll just put it in just to see what happens. Let's push this back a little. Uh, let's see. Is that better? Oops. I think I crumpled up the paper that I'm using down here. Some lady in Connecticut sold me 25 rolls of newsprint paper. And I have some of it here. It's fantastic. Thank you, whoever that lady was. So we'll push this tape in. That's all you have to do. And look at that. Comes right to life. Now, I did have this connected to a stereo earlier. So I can tell you that there was sound out of it and everything. Check this out. I'll be like a D one of those DJ guys. <laughs> I don't think that really works. I can feel a breeze, like a cool breeze, and I think, I think they cleverly use the motor as a fan to cool the circuitry while they use it to drive the, the big aluminum wheel. I'm not sure if this is anticlimactic to you because there's no music, but to me it's really cool. Look at this motor. Now, I will admonish you to never, ever, ever, ever do what I'm doing. Because you can get electrocuted and die if you touch the wrong thing in here. Most likely just the, the power strip I have this plugged into will, will pop and it'll be embarrassing, but I could literally die right now. So just keep that in mind. Don't mess around with electronical stuff. Now let's see. I guess the way it works is there's like a like a tape playing head in there and you can't see the tape itself. I don't really know what's going on. It's like... Ooh, what was that? Maybe if I push the program button something will happen? Oh, check that out. You push the program button and the tape head moves across the tape because the width of the tape is divided into four separate uh, four separate tracks. And I guess each track has like a left and a right or something. Maybe that's why it's called a track. Like there's four programs and each program has a left and a right track. In any case, it's like Morse code. I just ordered a peanut butter sandwich from the Luftwaffe. So, your tape goes in there. And... I guess that's about it. And now, the way to get this thing to stop... See, let's see. You can't really see the lights lit up. That one's lit up right there. And now... I guess none of them are lit up. See? It's hard to catch that on, on 
digital media. I was gonna say film. So in order to get this thing to shut off, all I gotta do is pull the tape out. I had no idea, I used to be in my friend's car. He had this old caddy with an eight track player in it. And I didn't know how to shut it off. I didn't know how to eject the tape, but all you do, push it in, starts playing. Let's see. That's not very exciting. And then you just pull it out and it stops. It's pretty ingenious, really. I think you could put me on a desert island with all this stuff forever and I couldn't design this thing. I don't know how to make anything. So I'm glad somebody else did. You pull it out, it stops, put it in, it starts again. And I guess sound signals go from that tape head thing in there and out those two wires and down the bottom there and then around here and then those two wires come out here into this little circuit board which I guess processes the sound so you got your gray wires but each one has like a like a positive and a negative and you can see there the negatives are grounded like the grounds are grounded here it goes through here and this must be like some audio processing circuit and then it comes out here to your uh, let's see that's the orange I don't know where the orange goes but this is your RCA output so I guess this is your your audio circuit board look at all the junk on there it's kind of hard to see but man there's transistors let's see if we can find all those transistors and diodes like it said on the back so all this stuff under here, I think, probably has to do with the drive mechanism and the motor. And that's your, your power circuit. And in here, you know, there's like a, a relay or a switch. So when you... And then you get your two wires, black and gray. They go under here. They come back out. And process the sound, and the sound comes out as a line level signal and goes into your stereo. Okay, so I guess that's about it. I'd like to thank Sound Design for making this thing. I'd like to thank the Rebel Songs of Ireland for being the tape that I played. I'd like to thank craftsman for making the best multi-screwdriver in the history of earth and i'd like to thank me um because i'm the one who just put in all the work to make this video and i'd like to thank you if you're still watching or if you watched any part of it and then stopped but then you wouldn't know that i'm thanking you now but i'm still thanking you so thank you and enjoy your night